Hi everybody, it's me, your boy, Rob Brabon, and I'm gonna do a video on how I did this. I'm pretty sure I'm not the one who invented this. I don't know, maybe, I, I doubt it. Everything's already been done, but I guess it's a hyperlapse uh, light painting thing or light painting time lapse. I don't know what you would call it. But I'm going to show you how I did it and give you like a brief overview of some things that you might need. And we're going to use this as a model, my good old 2011, because it makes a good model. Look at her. She's so pretty. And I just washed it. Let's get started on this. I got to work today, so let's hurry. Pretty much any DSLR is going to work. Certain point and shoots will work if you can manually control the shutter. You're going to have to have the shutter open for between 10, 20, 30 seconds, depending on how much painting you want to do in between each shot. I think the last one I did like 15 seconds for the Skyline video. So you're going to need a camera. You're going to need some sort of tripod. You're also going to need some sort of light source. You can use a light bar. You can use a flashlight. You can use a phone light. You can use pretty much anything. And you also have to be in a very dark environment. I am going to kill all the lights in the garage and it should be dark enough for that. It's bright outside, but I'm working a really weird schedule at work. So we're going to do this during the day. We're also going to be using my GVM automatic slider. You don't necessarily need an automatic slider. It does make things a lot easier with the time lapse functions that are kind of built into that thing. You can do it manually if you mark out where you're going to put the camera each time. You're not going to want to move it very far though. You're going to want to just go like a little maybe a half inch at a time. And if you have a tripod that's really stable, that's gonna help with that too. And also if you have some sort of remote, that's also gonna help. But we're gonna do it with the automatic slider just because it's really simple that way. And we're also gonna be using a pixel stick. We're also gonna be using the Yang Nuo YN360. You could even use sparklers for this. You could use anything that you light paint with. I'm not gonna do a light painting tutorial. I'm sure there's two billion of those out there. So we're just gonna do this whole light painting video time-lapse tutorial. This is our GVM slider. If you did not watch the review on this, I recommend it because it's a cool slider and I show you how to use it. I show you how to use the basic settings and also show you some of the functions of this thing and how nice it is for the money. You can find this on Amazon. Um, I don't think I put a link in the last video when I did the review of this, but just search GVM automatic camera slider. Not even sure how wide this one is, but this is it. We're going to use this. Right now we have our A7S set up, which we're just using. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, like I said, but this does have a remote input, which I do recommend if you do this, have some sort of remote. When you have a remote input, you're not going to shake the camera every time you go to hit this button because you get a little bit of shake every time you press it. When you do this, you want to put in a manual. So the settings I recommend for this is going to be ISO 100 and then take your shutter speed all the way to, uh, yeah, let's do, let's do 10 seconds just because I'm running low on time. So you may want to set your aperture to something a little bit more closed. This is just a manual focus for Okanon with a Nikon adapter because this is a Nikon mount. Because I found it cheap at Service Photo down in Hamden. Let's go F2.8 for that. That should be enough of a baseline for our light painting settings. We have that. We want to go in our controller, get a time lapse, and Interval is actually going to be how far the slider goes with each stop. Let's set it at 1.0. Stop time 22 seconds, which gives us enough time because the camera's going to have to process each time. So if you set the stop time to 20, it's actually going to like stop at that point. Let's test this just to make sure. You want to make sure that it stops long enough to where your camera can process that long exposure. Because if it doesn't process all the way, it's going to move and try to trigger a picture while it's still processing. The A7S takes a while to process these long exposures for some reason. The longer this interval goes, like I said, that's the distance. The longer that this goes, the choppier the video is going to be. Because you're going to have less shots overall. So... All we need to do now, turn the lights off, grab a light, and have fun. Make sure you have a lot of battery too. This is going to be the Yang Nuo YN360. I'm going to do a full review on this thing soon. This has probably been replaced with a better model by now. I've had this thing for a few years. I'm not going to give a full tutorial on how to light paint. I'm sure 10 billion people have done those tutorials online. Just longer exposure, walk around, and shine light wherever you want. 
you can experiment with it. It's going to look kind of random and erratic when you do it. The more you dance around, the more movement you're going to get with the light, and probably the the better the video will look. So let's uh, let's get to it. All right, that's the end of the first clip. That's about 80 shots. Took about a half hour to do that. This is a very time consuming process, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time. It's about 90 shots for that one clip, which probably won't be very long. I should have set the interval a little bit further. That was a 1-0. I might try 2-0 on the next shot. On the next one, we're actually going to use the Pixel Stick. The Pixel Stick is a very awesome light. It does a lot of different things very well, but it does eat through a lot of batteries. So you're going to want a lot of double A's if you're using a light like this. We're just going to do a bunch of random looks. I'm eventually going to do a review on this thing. There's a couple different reviews online. Uh, I've had this thing for a little while, and I don't use it as much as I'd like. But this is good excuse. Probably gonna do this in fisheye too. I like to look at a 24 mil but I want you to see a lot more of the light. So we're gonna move the car forward, do a rear shot with the fisheye and yeah and it's gonna look like this. That was clip number two. I guess I'm gonna talk about a half hour too. It's about 60 shots and that was with the fisheye. I set it at f4 because it seemed like the pixel stick was a little bright today. You can set the brightness on that. It's all fully adjustable. Plus we have a little bit of ambient light bleeding in through the main door of the garage. Another quick thing to note when you do this is make sure you have enough space around the car if you're shooting in an enclosed space like a garage. It will be dark so you don't want to trip. I didn't trip this time but I had a couple close calls when I was doing the Skyline stuff. So make sure you have plenty of room because it will be dark and you're going to be running around concentrating on making light painting movements and stuff. So always remember safety first when doing any kind of light painting because it's probably going to be dark. So don't trip. Yeah, let's do like more of the front. All right, that's another clip right there. Uh, I forgot to look how many shots that was, but I moved the car halfway through and I accidentally scrolled the wrong way. I scrolled backwards. So uh, yeah, I messed that one up a little bit. It still looks cool, I guess, and still like random. And you can see by doing the 2.0 interval on the slider, it is going to make it a little bit more, a little bit more jumpy. The motion's not going to be as smooth. So that 1.0 is probably the best way to go. We're running low on time, so that's why we did what we did. Another good side effect of all these is that you get a bunch of raw files that are going to look awesome because it's literally a hundred and some light painting shots right here. When I do this, I shoot in raw and then I batch organize in Lightroom. I'll probably try to film that too, so yeah. So once you have all your pictures taken, you want to take your memory card and import everything into Lightroom. When you put your memory card in and open Lightroom, you're going to see all of your pictures. You're going to go to... God, this neighborhood sucks. You can hear all the sirens. Once you have everything in there, you want to go to import and then import everything. I don't think I mentioned it before in this tutorial, but you are going to need some sort of photo editing software and some sort of video editing software. I just subscribed to Adobe's Creative Cloud. It's like $50 a month, but you get everything. You get Adobe Premiere and Photoshop and Lightroom and a bunch of other stuff that I don't use. You get After Effects too, which I really need to start learning more on. But you get all that for $50 a month, which isn't too bad being a the creative suite used to be like two thousand dollars or something because you took so many pictures it's probably going to take a while to import even though this is a pretty decent computer it's still taking a while to so go have a snack or something once everything is imported into your catalog or library or whatever they call it once it's all loaded in find an image that's kind of like average Find something that's colorful because you want to be able to adjust your saturation too to something that you like. So I like to find one that's kind of like one of those rainbow shots. Once you have one of these loaded up, take your develop settings and then just tweak tweak it how you want. Like if you want to boost the shadows a little bit and then like kind of squash the highlights so you can see more of the light, go ahead and do that. I like to add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity. Um, up the shadows just a little not anything crazy and then the highlights I like to squash those a little bit too just so you can see the the lights a little bit better and then you can do your little tone curve thing and if you want to get a little more further into it we can also affect this in Adobe Premiere we just really want something basic you don't want anything that looks too processed in my opinion sometimes you might want that super HDR look once you have that basic look you want to take and go to copy 
Uh, copy all those attributes. Then you want to go up to select all. It selects everything. And then you want to go down to sync. And then you can sync all the attributes, all your settings, and then hit synchronized. And then that's going to take those settings and put it on every single picture. And it just makes it a lot easier to edit everything once these are all affected. It's all going to have its own little little processed look. And it'll have a little more consistency to it. You don't want to go through and have to edit each one of these individually. That would take forever. An American flag picture is pretty cool. The other side effect of having all these pictures is that you can use these as actual, you know, pictures. You don't have to do it in a time lapse. I can take this picture and tweak it a little bit more if I want and use it for Instagram or whatever. And light painting is kind of hit or miss, so you're going to have some pictures that aren't really worthy of being a picture on their own you have so many of them there's going to be something that's good at least there should be unless you're really unlucky so once you have all that done go to file and then hit export and then your export dialog you get subfolder settings we're going to put this in a subfolder mustang tl we want to rename everything to custom name x of y so it'll be untitled one of 223 because that's how many pictures we have apparently. I keep everything high res just because you can squash everything down in Premiere later and crop everything in Premiere. So we're just going to do our renaming start number one and that puts everything in sequence. Once everything's in sequence it makes it a lot easier to throw into our timeline in Premiere. If everything's its own number sometimes things can get kind of mismatched and out of order. If we just rename everything through one of 223 then everything's gonna be in order. We have this in our own folder so we don't have to worry about it going to like documents and just putting 223 pictures somewhere inconvenient. So now we have all that we'll just click export and then just wait and it usually takes a while because 223 pictures is a lot depending on what your camera shoots resolution wise and depending on how much you processed everything. So now that everything is done exporting we want to open Premiere. Adobe Premiere is pretty much my go-to program because it comes with Adobe's Creative Cloud. Some people use Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro and Premiere seem to be the two main video editing softwares out there. Uh, you want to go to New Project we're going to call this Stang TL. And once you open it, you're going to also want to make a new sequence. And under the sequence settings, I usually use the DSLR 1080p 30 frames per second because that's what I shoot at usually. You can also make a sequence by dragging a clip, but because we're just using this for a time lapse, we don't really want to do that. If you drag one of the time lapse pictures into the sequence, it's going to take the properties of that JPEG. We don't want that, because then it'll be at like 4K or something. Actually, more than that, it'll be like 8K. So we're going to go and make that sequence setting like that. And then, once you have that done, we're going to go to our folder where we put all of our time-lapse stuff. We go to our Mustang time-lapse and then just take all of these, highlight them all, and just drag them right into the timeline. There's also another way to do this, but I never have any kind of luck with it. You can, I guess, import it into the project and it has like add to sequence or I forgot how they put it. But you can run everything in a sequence, but I haven't had any good luck with that. Once everything's in the sequence, I highlight, and then you want to right click on that. Once you have all your JPEGs in your sequence, you're going to want to just right click, and then you'll go to speed and duration. You want to enable the ripple edit, shifting trailer clips thing, and then move this down to duration of, move this down to a duration of, I think the last one I did was two. So that gives us two frames per clip. And I just click that. And as you can see, it made all of those JPEGs go super small. Now this is all zoomed in because we're under the property settings of 1080. So to fix that, what you do is click one of these JPEGs and then go to your effects controls. Under effects controls, you can go to scale and just scale this thing back. Make sure that you're on that clip that you just highlighted. So if you scale this thing back on the resolution of an A7S, it seems like 
about a 46, 47. Scale into 46 puts everything nice and square in the timeline. So once you do that, just copy. And then zoom back out. Highlight all of these again. And then click on one and go to paste attributes. Once you paste attributes, that's going to move the scale of everything. So now you can see that everything's nice and square. Now when you first go to play this, it's going to play everything extra choppy because your computer has to process each one of these clips individually. So to get around that, make everything nice and smooth, go to the beginning of your time lapse and hit I. And then go to the end of the time lapse and hit O. Go up to your sequence menu and go to render into out. And when you render into out, it's going to render all of these JPEGs into, I don't know, I guess a, a usable type format. I don't, I don't know how rendering works, but it's going to play a lot smoother now. This will take a while depending on your computer speed and all that good stuff. This is a pretty decent computer, so it shouldn't take too long. But it's still going to take, a, I guess, two minutes total. What are you doing, Perry? Shut up. I'm trying to edit. I'm trying to try and record video. Now everything is rendered and we can play the clip. And as you can see, it's a lot smoother. If you want to make it even more smooth, you can take the duration down and move it back down to one frame per second, which makes it super short. But it'll make everything a lot smoother. So all you got to do now is put it to some music and then throw it in another video. And there you go. There is a light painting hyperlapse or whatever you want to call it. If you want to try this project, like I said, just make it random. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. And please subscribe. Please. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good day.